to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Musketeer Runic Playtest and Combo Guide. So in this video, we're just going to go over the, you know, the, the deck. So I will just key, talk about the key cards in Runics, uh, Musketeer Runic. And that'll be pretty much it. In the decorating part of it, I will talk about the side deck more and you will see a bit more of that. Okay, with that, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the key monsters in Musketeer Runix. And one of them is this card. Magical Musketeer Kid Brave. This card is absolutely fantastic in Musketeer Runic. And in any uh, version of Musketeer Runic that you play, I feel, in my personal opinion, you play this card at three because the pluses that it gives you are just really, really good. With this card, victory will be mine! Okay, and so here's the next three of in Musketeer Runics, which is Magical Musketeer Casper. This is one of your key cards in this deck as this card will allow you to add all the magical musket cards which are going to be useful to be breaking your opponent's boards. That's really convenient. After all, the the saying I have with this deck is if you control the field, you control the game. That's kind of the truth. And Casper really epitomizes um, that saying. So essentially, if a uh, spell or trap is activated underneath its column, you're going to be getting to add spells or tra uh, musketeer cards. Most of your cards you'll be adding will be musketeer, magical musket cross domination. This is going to allow you to um, negate, you know, a normal monster, you know, an effect monster. Um, I've also, also like, fun fact with this ruling, this, um, with the way it is, it does not work on links, as links do not have defense points. So, bear in mind that Magical Musket Cross Domination will not work on links. Moving on, the other card, other cards you'll be adding will include as well, Magical Musket Lost Stand. This is a card you're going to be adding. Now, what are you going to be doing with this? Um, 90% of the time, you, if possible, you're going to want to add this in turn one and set it. Now, why will you set it? Because you have to respect board breakers that are in this format right now. And with the effect of Dark Ruler No More or Ultimate Slayer, you're not going to be able to activate your magical musket cards if they're in their hand. So usually if this card is in your hand or if you can search it, it's the first thing you'll search immediately, you will uh, set it so that you're going to be able to activate it. So that even if a Dark Road or more is activated or an Ultimate Slayer is activated, you're going to be okay. The other targets include as well Magical Musket Dancing Needle. Now, this is a card, again, you're going to be adding. It's going to be very useful uh, against, you know, those tear matchups and sprite matchups but just in general if the opponent wants to be adding cards from the graveyard movement from the graveyard is going to be something that you're going to be able to be doing once you have dancing needle in your hand okay and finally the other target you're going to be adding is magical musket desperado this is a card you're going to be adding to just destroy spells, traps, or monsters in general. Yes, it targets, but with this card and with uh, Last Stand as well, if I can just get that, these two cards in your possession, this means that spells or traps or any other things such as Mystic Mind that come up or Floodgates are not really going to affect your deck. In fact, this deck loves when the opponent plays Mystic Mind, as that means as you can activate your spells and traps from your hand, so you are not really affected by Mystic Mind at all. In fact, Mystic Mind is something that you you welcome, because it means your opponent has essentially thrown that game away, as you can just let it stay on the field and just deck them out. Now let's go to our next monster. And here we have our last key main deck monster, Magical Musketeer Doctor. 
Now, this is going to be the card that will complete the trifecta and the, car, the monsters you want to have on your board, you know, on turn three or going forward. The ideal board, you know, should be, if we'll just move stuff away, having Doc, Casper, and Kid Brave. This is the trifecta that you want on your board when nothing ruins the game plan. Turn three going forward. When you have these three monsters on your board, you are in a winning position with this deck. Uh, this is going to allow you to just draw two, add a card, add a mus magical musket from your m card from your hand with Casper and Doctor. Re keep returning your magical musket cards from your graveyard back to your hand. You will have an kind of like an infinite loop. And together with the magical, with the runic cards, it's just going to be really difficult for your opponent to gain traction. Let's move those away and put back Magical Musketeer Doctor. So that's essentially it, really. Uh, Doctor is just there to rev uh, return all your Magical Musket spells or traps that you've used in the previous turns, and so you can keep using them again uh, if you haven't used them already, and just give you uh, just a way to just stop your opponent. Um, remember, the philosophy of this deck is if you control the field, you control the game. Let's move on. And now we'll go to the key spells. The key spells in Musketeer Runic. One of them is the field spell Runic Fountain. This is going to be your win condition as this combined with the Magical Musket cards means that you're going to be able to draw, you know, up to three, uh, you know, Runic quick play spells from your graveyard when they're activated. You can handle this power. And this is something, again, I want to say that's very important with the runic spells. Remember, your battle phase is skipped when you activate any runic uh, quick play spell, as they all have this first line of text when activating them. So bear that in mind. But leaving that aside, runic fountain is absolutely fantastic and turns really your quick plays with its effect, you can activate your runic quick play spells from your hand at any time. It's essentially the deck's, you know, orchestrated babble. Alrighty, and so this is the last key spell I'm gonna talk about in Musketeer Runic. Runic Tip. This card is going to be your baby. Highly unlikely. It's absolutely insane the pluses that it's going to give you. Um, because let's, its effect is um, you can add, after activation, you can add one runic card from your deck to your hand. Except a runic tip, then banished up card from your deck. That's too strong. So what are the targets that you can add that include this? You can add runic freezing curses. This allows you to negate a monster effect similar to cross domination. You have Runic Destruction. Similar to last uh, to Desperado, this is going to allow you to destroy spells or traps. Desperado also allows monster destruction as well. You have Runic Flashing Fire. Again, similar to Desperado, which destroys also monsters. However, with Flashing Fire, the main difference is that you're able to destroy special summer monsters only. But that is still pretty good. And finally... We have the two of in the deck, Runic Allure. You only play two as it's uh, searchable. I find that one is a bit too too few. Two is just right, and that's what uh, you need. Because that this effect does come up, and it is really, uh, really important, in my opinion, when you're playing Musketeer Runic, as your objective is to mill your opponent to death. So I feel Allure is important to fulfill that purpose. I mean, yeah, you can play the deck without it, but then really, in my opinion, I feel you're not really, uh, you know, playing Runic the way it's intended to be playing. I mean, if you wanna, you can play the other cards as an engine, maybe, whatever, but you always have to bear in mind with the Runic spell, uh, quick plays activation that you skip your next battle phase and bat and skipping an entire phase is extremely important 
in Yu-Gi-Oh. The battle phase is important in Yu-Gi-Oh. And it does come up as I played with this uh, deck in Locals recently. And it does the battle phase does come up time and time again. And one of the reasons why I lost with this was it because the deck was inconsistent? No. Was it the deck? Was it the point that I couldn't, um, you know, hit my opponent hard? No. The biggest reason was because you guessed it. I was skipping my battle phase, and that comes up every single time. So yeah, bear this in mind. Okay. So I'll go to the key traps in this deck. We're back again with an old friend, Infinite Impermanence. Please, that's right. Um, yeah, Infinite Impermanence is a card that really, absolutely helps this deck immensely. More than other cards, um, more than other hand traps, you know, especially in the main. As it's going to allow you to trigger your Musketeer cards. It's another monster negate as well. Meaning that you have quite a few monster negates in this deck. And while it's set as well, you have that column locking of, you know, in the same column, you, your opponent can activate spells or traps in the column that it is set and, and activates. So there's that as well going for it. There's not really much to say about Infinite Impermanence. Great card, fantastic card, ages like fine wine. In this deck, it comes up every single time. It pulls its weight all the time. That's all I've got to say about it. Okay, let's go now to the key extra deck monsters. Okay, let's do some test hands and see the power of, you know, Musketeer Runix when it gets going. Draw. Magical Musket, Dancing Needle. Draw. Runic Flashing Fire. Draw. Magical Musket Kid Brave, draw. Magical Musketeer Casper, let's move those a little bit, and draw. One, two, three, four, five, runic tip. Let's just move those, you know, there like that. Here's runic tip. Okay, move that aside, and let's now start the play. So you are first going to normal summon Magical Musketeer Kid Brave. Now, at this point, you know, if a hand trap is activated, uh, nothing is going to happen. Then you're going to activate Runic Tip. Yep, so we'll see here Runic Tip in the spell and trap card zone in the column of Kid Brave. So you're going to go Chain Link 1, Runic Tip, Chain Link 2, Magical Musket, Kid Brave. Right? So, what's, this is what's going to happen. With the effect of Kid Brave, you're going to discard Casper, as you're not going to need it um, currently in this hand, enabling you to draw two. So you'll draw two cards, which will be, here we have the Dark Ruler, and our second card will be the Flashing Fire. Okay, we'll keep that for later. So we've drawn two. And then we'll go to the effect of the Runic Tip. Uh, since it'll go back to chain link one, the effect of runic tip will allow you to add a runic card from your deck to your hand. So you're going to add fountain, and its other effect of runic tip is you get to banish one card from the top from the top of your opponent's deck. So it gets banished. Okay, okay. So you're then going to activate runic fountain. Right, right. So with Runic Fountain activate, activated, here's where the plussing begins. Remember, we have currently just drawn two cards. We're going to activate Runic Flashing Fire and activate uh, its secondary effect because all Runic spells and traps have a secondary effect there to special summon from the extra deck. So we'll do just that. We will then special... Moonin, right? And it'll be going into the extra deck monster zone because of the effect of that. So, so what are we going to do? So it's going to be chain link, yeah, one and two. 
So the effect of moon in first will discard a card, right? In order to add a runic continuous spell, which will be runic allure. Then we will activate the effect of fountain because it's chain link because uh, we've gone in reverse order. We will target up to three runic quick play spells. Okay, put them to the bottom of the deck, as we've seen there, and we will get to draw three. So let's see the three cards we get. So draw, runic destruction, draw another dark ruler no more, and draw runic destruction. So let us look at our hand in total. So we started with five cards. What? How is our hand now, we have Runic Destruction, 1, Dark Ruler, 2, Runic Destruction, 3, Casper, 4, Dancing Needle, 5, and Dark Ruler No More, 6. So, we started with 5 cards, and we end up with 6. So, you know, not too bad if you, we say so ourselves. And in the end phase, you're going to be gaining 1,000 life points because of Moonin. Remember also, because we activated uh, Runic Quick Play spell, we've skipped our next battle phase. Alrighty. So, let's go to test hand number two. Test hand number two. Draw. Magical Musketeer, Kid Brave. Draw. Magical Musket, Desperado. Draw. Dark Ruler No More. Draw. Musketeer, Magical Musket, Dancing Needle, and our final card, draw, Flashing Fire. This is a great hand for going second. So let's see if I go second, one, two, three, four, five, what I will get. And our sixth card, if going second, is Imperm. Wow, this is really good. So let's say we are going second. So if we're going second and our opponent has made up their board, we will, like before, summon Magical Musketeer Kid Brave and then activate Dark Ruler No More, okay? So that we can break a uh, set board uh, that they have. Because remember, like, we can't really be dealing with the negates here. So we'll use our board breaker to deal with those monster negates. The effect of Kid Brave is gonna activate so what are we going to discard here? We're going to discard the uh, Desperado because um, 90% of the time, most decks, I, I feel anyway, are going to use their graveyard for, for something. So discard Desperado, and this allows us to draw two. So let's see our two cards. Fountain, nice, and Fountain, absolutely fantastic. This means that we now don't need to special summon uh, Huggins to draw to you know to add fountain from deck to hand so we're going to activate fountain right after we've activated fountain we're going to then activate flashing fire flashing fire we're then going to activate its we're going to activate its secondary effect to special so we will special as you know moon in in the extra deck zone and so like before it'll be chain link one two so it will be moon in first. We will discard our second a fountain in the hand because we're not going to really need that with moon in's effect to add the allure. Then the effect of fountain, uh, we will then target up to three runic quick play spells. So we'll target that, put it to the bottom, and draw one. So we have this bad boy Right there, and then we will end, and then we will end the turn there. As you know, in the end phase, we're going to be gaining one thousand life points, and with Kid Brave, that's pretty much it. So okay, now you're seeing how the deck deals with going second. Let's go to our last test hand, and here we have our last test hand. Draw, Runic Destruction. Draw, Runic Fountain. Draw, Casper, draw, Casper, draw, Runic Destruction. So, 
This is an interesting hand. We can do things with it. So we will put these, put it, and we will start with, if we're going first, we will start with Casper. Now, Casper, we're then going to activate the effect of Runic Destruction. So we will again chain link one, two. The effect of Casper first. Now, if at this point a hand trap is activated, well, you're just going to just cry, as you're not going to be able to do anything at this point, and you won't be able to have the searching of Casper. Bear that in mind with this deck. Any kind of hand trap, like an Imperm, Veiler, Ash Blossom, or stuff like that, is going to just make you cry, as you don't have any solutions to that. As we do not run um, Call by the Grave or Cross Out Designator. You can run these cards, you can run Cross Out Designator. Fun fact, it's a quick play, so it can uh, activate your uh, secondary effect of a lore, first effect of a lore. Uh, but we don't run it for space and also to be just lean, mean, and consistent as possible. Anyways, let's say that there is no hand trap, so chain link 1, 2. Casper's effect will activate first, as it's going to allow the way to add so do you know what we're going to add because we have already um a, a runic destruction here for spell destruction we're going to need a monster effect negate so we're going to be adding um let's see here so we'll add this card you can see at the bottom of the screen magical musket cross domination that will be added to the hand. The effect of runic destruction means we'll special summon you know and you know and love him. We're gonna special summon but moon in. We're gonna activate um the effect of moon in, which is going to discard Casper to add a continuous spell. Runic continuous spell, which will be a lore, right? So we'll add a lore. Then before the turn ends, we're going to activate Fountain, activate Allure, and then and then you know end our end our turn. So this and you'll gain a thousand life points. This hand is essentially not the best. Uh, we didn't get a plus here, but on our opponent's turn, we'll just be able to draw one pop just draw one because there's only one runic uh quick play in your hand and you won't have and uh with the way chain links are working it's gonna be like that and so essentially that's it really hopefully you enjoy uh this deck we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. 